Mordovia is unique among Russia's republics. It's the homeland for an ethnic minority, but that ethnic minority, the Mordvins, doesn't exist. This isn't a joke. It's actually a huge problem for the two indigenous groups in Mordovia that do exist. Because, you see, the people the Kremlin incorrectly calls Mordvins are actually two distinct people with different languages, cultures, and traditions, known as the Urzia and the Moksha. A growing number of them are fed up with Moscow's imperialism and the lie about their identity and see independence as the best way to gain control of their future. But what form should an independent Mordovia take? Should the Urzia and Moksha try to launch separate states or form some sort of confederation? Or should they unite with other independence movements in the South Urals? This is a complicated question. But first, let's discuss why there is something called the Republic of Mordovia in the first place. Mordovia is located roughly 400 kilometers east of Moscow and is the westernmost of six important republics spanning the South Ural Mountains. It has roughly 780,000 residents, of whom 290,000 are officially, but inaccurately, categorized as Mordvins. Why Mordvin? In the 1920s, the Soviet Union divided up the ethnic groups from its imperial past, a policy known as national delimination. As part of this process, the Urzia Moksha Autonomous Oblast was created in 1928, but having two different ethnic groups in the same region didn't fit the policy. Rather than divide the region, the Soviets just imposed the term Mordvin on both groups, erasing the Urzia and Moksha identities from official documentation and declaring Urzia and Moksha languages to be dialects of a single Mordvin language, which is crazy because Urzia and Moksha speakers can't understand each other. Like the best lies, the idea of a single Mordvin people is based on a sliver of truth. The Urzia and Moksha have historic and linguistic ties, as well as ties to Finns, Estonians, and several other indigenous groups in Russia, like the Komi in the far north. But saying there are connections doesn't magically turn two ethnic groups into one. France and Italy both emerge from the Roman Empire, and both countries speak Romance languages. But imagine lumping Italy and France together and declaring that they were one people, with one culture and one language. That would be nonsense. For the Urzia and Moksha, this nonsense has been devastating. Because their languages are not mutually comprehensible, and neither has official status, pretty much everyone has to speak Russian to get by, even more so than in other republics. As Urzia and Moksha drop out of daily use, an increasing number of children grow up speaking only Russian. In fact, much of Mordovia's officially Russian population is made up of Urzia and Moksha people who lost their language in recent generations. Both groups are fighting to survive, of the two, the Urzia are the most organized and independence-minded. This has been driven partly by the revival of Inishkipazia, the traditional Urzia religion. For the first time in three centuries, the Urzia celebrated the festival of Raskin Osks in 1999 by gathering on a sacred hill, praying to their traditional gods, and paying respect to their ancestors. Held every three years, the Raskin Osks is also when the Urzia elect a chief elder, or Inyazor, in 2019, an important new Inyazor was elected, Sirius Bolyain. A longtime exile in Ukraine, Bolyain took part in the Maidan Revolution, served as a Ukrainian army officer in the Donbass, and in 2018 co-founded Free Adel Ural, an umbrella group for independence movements from across the South Urals. Bolyain is a fierce advocate for Urzia independence, and since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, his actions have only grown bolder. In a famous video filmed in March 2022, he appealed to Russia's citizens to engage in sabotage to help collapse the regime, saying, In about 10 to 20 years, your children or grandchildren will ask you, What did you do? Make up your mind right now. The Moksha independence movement is smaller, but was also accelerated by the full-scale invasion. In January 2023, a Russian army unit composed of 350 mostly Moksha men was wiped out in fighting near Luhansk. Responding to perceived genocide, a group of Moksha living in exile formed the Moksha National Committee, currently led by Donasi Chovhanon. The two movements both agree that they want out of the Russian Federation, but their leaderships have different visions for the future after independence. In 2022, Boyan proposed a federal state of Urzia Mastor, which would include a Moksha region, and which could possibly join an Idel Ural confederation with Tatarstan, Bashkortostan, and the other South Ural republics. 
In August 2023, the Moksha National Committee published their own plans, which call for a temporary partnership with the Urzia for expediency, but with the ultimate goal of a fully independent Moksha state called Moksha Mastor. Whatever form independence takes, it's clear that Putin's disastrous special military operation is putting the future of the Russian Federation into question. Despite different ideas for what should come next, Urzia and Moksha activists agree on three things. They should be free to speak their own languages and practice their own cultures. The colonial occupation by Moscow must end. And they are positively, definitely, 100% not Mordvins. (laughs) 